option for the golden line. I'm just going to move this glass over the way. Yeah, you got a water bottle, so you don't have glass. Close this door. There we go. It's a nice sunny day, so we'll see. A lot of people may be in their minute. garden. Yeah. It's not live yet. I haven't seen it, but may wait. Maybe I should. Mine scroll says along. it's been thirty seconds okay, already, and there are three the people page. already. Oh. Hello. There we are. Hi, Val. There we are. Hi, Val. <laughs> All right. How are you on this lovely day? Can't believe how gorgeous it is outside. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Marie. How are you doing? I was just thinking before we started the, the live stream, wondering about uh, whether we'd be able to buy some plants soon. Judith Huco from Vancouver Island. Hey, Judith. Hey, hi, Judith. Thanks hey. so much for coming. Marie Payne, hi. Hi, Val. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, is that, did anyone bring something to work on? Hi, Mia. Thank you for reminding me because I know, I know <laughs> I'm supposed to know who you are because I've seen it so many times, but. <laughs> I appreciate the reminder. Uh, did anyone bring anything to work on? Any materials or whatever? I, of course, am going to be working on my now getting more and more famous science <laughs> supplement. Um, this is what I did last at last week's. And I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this intervention to the volcano and it, it, I used an actual piece of snow fence to do it. And I kind of like that too. I like uh, bringing in some fun, surprising materials to work with. So, <clears throat> and it's got me in a chain link frame of mind. You have lots to muddle through. Excellent. <laughs> That I sort of do too. I've got a table full of stuff uh, uh, left, most of it left here from yesterday's uh, jelly. jelly jam class. And um, speaking of which, uh, next week is the last of this group of four jelly jam classes, but I've opened up another six. So if you're um, at all interested in gel plate mono printing, Anybody who's a beginner at it, I'm going to do a kind of bonus instructional video on just the, the basics of gel plate printing and the gel plate cleanup, paint application, brayering, all of that, so that when you join the first class or soon after, you know, you watch it as soon as you can, um, you'll, you'll be a little bit up to speed so you won't be starting at zero because a number of people will be continuing from the four weeks. So, um, and I'll just mention this uh, now too. I'll probably mention it a couple of times. I'm uh, inspired by this experience and I've, I've had some inquiries uh, related to the virtual studio parties. I am going to, my next other course offering is going to be altered books in mixed media. So that will start May 15th. The Jelly Jam will start May 7th. Uh, Friday, May 15th will be the start of the altered books. And again, that's on my website, <clears throat> which will be in the com the, the description below the video after, after the video is ended, the live stream is ended. Valerie Ashton asks, do you do photo transfers in the jelly jam? Well, uh, you know, if that's something you'd like to see in the six upcoming six week, I could, I could definitely bring that into, into it. Um, because the, um, um, first of all, I'm open to suggestions like that. I, of course, I have a number of things rolling around in my head, but, um, the idea is to sort of expand 
expand what we're exploring, go deeper with some things. So, and as soon as, you know, we've brought image transfers into it, then they can become part of the combinations of everything else. So, so that's a great idea, Val. I'd be happy to do that. Um, I am going to tilt this screen down so you can see what I'm up to. And I'll just, what you're now that I, <laughs> yeah, and now that I see that, I'll, I'll move these pens out of the way. I'll just put them here. That's good. I might so want them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll just no. put them there. <laughs> there we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, glue two of the pages together. I was flipping through, looking, and this is kind of a meh page. And it's good to have some stronger pages. And I love this spread. This is such a classic clean spread. Obviously, the binding has cut into the circle a little bit. But um, I love circles. And uh, the boldness of that really has me interested. So um, I will get this strengthened up. Livestock from the sea. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, if experimental aquaculture techniques fulfill their promise, the fish farmers of the world may one day outnumber fishermen. Of course, we are now in the world where there are all these fish farms and they have not solved the problem of, of uh, infestations of things like lice that can make the fish sick and... Uh, die and then it gets into the wild so it wasn't quite as as unblemished a, yeah uh, a future as as it seemed douglas copeland had a show at mocha some year quite a few years ago now um where he had these lego constructions this is before mocha moved to its new location and um and there was a really great didactic panel um, where he was talking about the, because of course he's like my age, our age, Cal's my age. Um, he was talking about the, um, how we grew up at a time of, of real optimism. Because, you know, I was a little kid, I was born in the 60s and I was a little kid in the 60s. And I remember, and that was the centennial year for Canada. Um, and, uh, I remember bursting with optimism as we headed into the seventies. I was still a child at the time. And, and this book, 1972 is a 1972 dated supplement. Lisa Jane Irvine has joined us. Hi, Hi Lisa. Lisa. I, should, I should try and adjust this a little bit. Actually, you know, maybe it's just too close. Yeah, there. So it'd be nice if they could see a small part of my head. Can you tilt the screen back a little bit? That's plenty. Yeah, good. Good. Now I feel like you can see me and you can see what I'm doing. And I'll give you close-up looks from time to time. Anyway, 1972 is when I moved to Toronto. So it was a year of big change for me. So it's... Uh, it's actually quite a good thing for me to be working on something from that year. All right. I'm going to flip through. Oh, isn't this nice? This shape that the buoys of, of the fish net are making, or, you know, it's a containment net, presumably for the fish farm, but it makes me think of the, the bison page I was working on where we had I riffed off the shape of the tick to develop this shape here and really kind of the underlying shape of the head of the bison is kind of like that too. So I feel like I've found a, I don't know if it's a motif exactly, but some kind of repeating thing. So that, I might have to start there because that's interesting enough to me to, to do something with. Yeah. Always recap your glue sticks <laughs> promptly. Because you know what happens if you don't. 
these new ones that I find really hard to. The threading it's, is it's like, awful. How, like it's how does it catch? Pathologically difficult to get yeah. aligned. Yeah, well, I'll keep trying. There we go. <laughs> Got it. Finally. That's good. So I think this is a good time for a little bit of paint pen. I'm hoping. No, that doesn't sound good. Sounds like this one died. Oh. Yeah, but it doesn't shake. So I guess it's dead before it even got anywhere. Okay. Eh, sounds better. Lisa Lisa said she's I asked her what she was gonna work on. She's moving around, moving things around, trying to decide. Right. <laughs> and Judith Hugo says, just love your stream of thought process narrated. Oh, I'm so glad, Judith. Thank you. Uh I might as well externalize it. Um, I think it's actually, uh, you know, if you're interested in how things become the way they become, the decisions that get made along the way and why, that that, that narrative is is very helpful. Um, but I'm glad you enjoy it particularly. So Lisa, that's nice. Lisa agrees. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's great. Okay, I've got a couple of dandy oranges here. One's a lighter, brighter orange, so I'm going to try that first. So I'm curious, Kim, what what do you um, what do you look for to, uh, to to pick a spread on what to work on? Well, in this case, it's that shape relationship that I was talking about, right? Right, right? and. Um, uh, there's a there's a theme of orange coming up. I mean, this is a an a, a tinted orange. There's a lot of orange on this, and so um, there are bits of orange in other places, but this one has a lot of orange. Um, I should perhaps review the the book just before I get into that, in case there's anybody here who hasn't seen it before. Um, so these are the end papers with gesso and pen and charcoal and paint. Um, and then this minimalist pen, including some metallic pen here. Uh, this definitely not minimalist. This has image transfer and a couple of them and uh, drawing and in paint pen and so on. And this one also works upside down. Here's my uh, uh, minimalist spread I quite enjoy, interfering with the type. When I was a graphic designer, typography, typographic design was really a specialty of mine. And so I love working with type. Um, lovely lava flows and some some image transfer and really messing with i'll just do a close-up on that again really going in and messing with that image scratching and and adding water soluble graphite and so on um, this one i've got this pen is actually a kind of a metallic marker um, although it's it shows up only very slightly, um, and then some white pen in here. Uh, look at these beautiful lines that were part of the encyclopedia. So that was part of my response to it. This is showing through from a different page than the lunar scape, and uh, and it's cut. And then I've got this poor image transfer on it. So. Actually, one of the things is this light doesn't shine on the book when I go close. Um, so I've drawn into the chain link. Yes, that she loves the examples. Oh, that's lovely, Mia. Thank you. I'm glad. I think it's, it's nice to get a sense. This is one of my favorite spreads, actually, is this molecule spread. I've messed with the type. These are all perforations. Some of you... Um, uh, may remember that from previous, and this is actually torn. So, it, you know, we're looking through things to other levels. 
Mia says she's working on paper face masks, elastics mm. and staples designed by a doctor from New York, but I cannot work, listen and watch Kim's beautiful work all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's great. I I want to do some face masks too. So uh, uh, there's so many designs out there, right? Um, almost at the end now. So there's this. You'll notice there are some intense little areas picked out mm -hmm. in addition to the obviously strong riding dominant pattern. And then just a little hint of the color there, too. So. And then we get to the bison spread that I worked on last week, which isn't quite finished, but it's well along. So I thought, um, you know, I might come back to it later on this afternoon. But first, I wanted to move forward. And that brings us up to date. So there we go. So this is now nicely glued. Just give it another burnishing with the applicator. And uh, right, now we'll get back to this. I love the, you know, just what's not to love about orange on blue. So um, that's going to be nice. Nice if I could tilt it up a little bit, maybe. I never, I'm, I'm very unprecious about things, you may have noticed. <laughs> I can always put it back in the container, but this allows me to tilt it up so you can see it better. And I can see it just fine, so. It's like a pearl necklace in the water. Pearls of wisdom. That's a bit of a transformation. Yeah, you know, it's already great. energized it quite a lot. Yeah. And that's that's what it's about, you know. Bringing something new to it to transform. Judith asks, Kim, will you do something on every page? Is that the fate of the finished book? Do you know yet? Um, some pages I glue together. Um, I, I glued together one pair. So those, obviously, what's glued together, you won't see. Um, some pages I will cut out uh, to make room because of these, depending on you know what I layer on to the pages, uh, the, the book can get more and more splayed from the thick, the added thickness. And um, so I'll need to cut out sections. And some of the pages that I cut out, I will cut out so that I can uh, alter and cut up and collage back into the book on some pages. So, you know, who knows? <laughs> And I, I, one of the ideas I that's germinating in my head is that I'm going to make a, a kind of hole that's going to go through quite a few pages so that it'll have a, a feeling of dimension in it. And I'm going to play with that somehow. Um, so a whole bunch of pages will have that in common. But some of the pages will... Maybe most of the pages will be not single pages. They'll be thickened because when they're th when they're glued together, the they're sturdier. Judith asks why, but I'm not sure which. <laughs> uh, why do I glue some together? Well, they're sturdier. Um, why do I cut some out to make <laughs> room? I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Why? Yeah. So I'm going to switch to the other orange now, which is a little darker, and uh, use that where the strings go. Maybe I'll... Put 
But that won't be all because I can feel something else coming on. So Lisa was asking about, uh, first of all, she said, turning into a day of finding out, finding dried out materials. Has anyone ordered supplies since we've gone into isolation? <clears throat> to which I replied. Um, that, that we did the ones. We did earlier and that was a week, but Net Curries is now more like four weeks. And that's, I've heard that Studio 6 is faster and that Michael's offers curbside pickup. So. Yeah, I'm thinking about Michael's actually. Um, I There's certain, some things I'm, Definitely not inclined to buy there because, like, some of their paper pads and things yeah. and paints are literally like the the professional paints are literally twice as expensive. <laughs> yeah, and do you want to talk about the coupons? Oh yes. Yeah. So um, we've uh, from a few students found out that Michaels is not offering their forty percent off one item coupons but instead and this is quite good they're offering a 20 percent off the entire order coupons so you know at this point you're not likely to order a single item to go pick up it's not really worth the the risk you're taking on or whatever right the the hullabaloo that that it causes now to go out and get things so um so I think that the entire order idea is a really good idea because people want to order more stuff. Um, now, so. before this week, I didn't have my friendly little fan here. It's one of my favorite little fans. Oh, I come have. Come on, I'm your greatest fan. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I have three of these, or we have three of these. Um, I have one downstairs in my studio, uh, and it has a clamp base as well as a tabletop base, which I find really, really helpful. So one of my studios actually clamped to the ceiling, the, the rafters, and um, the one in our laundry room also clipped to the ceiling. And then this one, uh, sometimes I clip it to a bookcase, so it's not taking up table space, but I thought today it'd be nice not to have to necessarily fan manually if I can. All right, I have a couple of things to pass along. Excellent. So Mia is asking best color combos out there? Question mark. I am color combination challenge. Well, it's hard to go wrong with anything in the orange blue territory, frankly, in my opinion. Um, but there's a time and place. It's a that's a complementary pairing. But you can sort of shift to either side of those colors so you can use a yellow orange with a, a a blue violet or a blue or a blue green that kind of thing so um i like a red violet with an orange not everybody does but you know my grandfather used to say um all colors go with all other colors it's a question of of um proportion and and they don't all have to be pure, right? So there's a lot to be said for creating modified versions of some colors and purer versions of other colors. And then, and then really you can make anything go. Uh, for that purpose, I find it really useful to have a few things in my, um, my paint box, including a neutral gray, not a Payne's gray. I love Payne's gray. I always have Payne's gray too, but that's a blue. Many of you know that. Some of you may not know that. This is a real neutral gray. It's literally a black and white that's been mixed together. So you can make it yourself by just mixing black and white together until you get a nice middle value gray and stick it in an airtight jar. Um, so that will knock back the intensity of a color right away. Um, you can, of course, tint with white, but you can also tint with a uh, uh, Titan buff or unbleached titanium. Get it closer so you can see. That color doesn't look very accurate. Let me hold it next to a, a pure white. 
and then maybe you'll be able to see. That shows it. Okay, so when you when you mix with this color, you modify it a little differently. Um, and mixing with earthy colors, you know, earth tones, so um, earth pigments. So yellow ochre, yellow oxide, nice color on its own. Mix that in with, um, with some yellow and you shift the yellow uh, and so on. Uh, Lisa Irvine asks, says, I might have missed this. Where did you get the book you're working in? Oh, this is a, a, a 1972 World Book Science Annual. So it's a supplement if you were... Uh, if you had bought a set of encyclopedia and uh, 1972 is a meaningful year to me. And uh, we've, we've picked up over the years, two or three sets, maybe three or four sets of, of uh, encyclopedias and other reference sets. And they're fantastic because they tend to have a mixture of diagrams and photographs and illustrations and, and some classic typography and design. So I like working with that. Let's see how this is doing now. Well, that's pretty good, okay. So that was quick. And I didn't wear out my shoulder, <laughs> <laughs> which is a, an issue these days, so. Right. Mallory said she ordered from above ground and it's being delivered today, it took two weeks. So. Two weeks. Okay. That's it was two weeks for us too. So above ground's obviously doing a managing pretty well. It's tough, right? Because they have to, they have, they have to do proper protocols to protect their staff. So they can't have as many people on. Now I'm just thinking about carrying this out mm -hmm. now into the page. So I'm thinking about. Would you echo the sort of crescent shape or would you turn it into a more sinuous S curve or? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm nothing if not an improviser. <laughs> Do I ever plan? Yes, I do sometimes plan as well. But there are some, uh, in fact, my paintings, certainly of recent times, tend to be very planned out, although I make discoveries along the way too. There we go. That's what that shape's become. Can you, uh, would you be interested in talking a little bit about working responsibly with, with a book where there's already material versus um, what it's like to work on a blank sheet with nothing to respond to? Well, that to me, that's a big part of the fun of working with a book or I mean, I'm hard pressed to think of something other than a book. So I'll just say a book um, because of the existing content. When you have, it's like you're getting a head start. You're being given visual material to, to respond to. As soon as you look at some images and maybe some words, like uh, someone I think pointed out the headline, um, it gets your head thinking and allow that to keep going, allow that to become, to start rolling and to develop momentum and get, get curious, more and more curious about what you're looking at in an artist way, which can include content, but also formal aspects. What is it that you notice about this? And you keep, you notice I keep noticing shape right? And um, um, color and 
Well, in the previous last week, I you know I picked up on the bison, and so that was subject matter. I thought I'd develop that, and that was to develop a connection with the pa the adjacent page, which is important, you know, because you see each each spread of a book as a unified whole. Now, of course, you can make them contrast sharply with each other. So it's not that they need to look harmonized, but it's interesting when you, you know, a whole book, it would be good to make some connections between adjacent pages throughout. So, um, and I am an associative brain. I remember um, someone we knew said to me in when the internet was taking off, and he said to me, the internet's made for you. And I said, really? <laughs> Which is really funny to think of now. <laughs> uh, how long a day out of every day would you say you spend online? Oh, a lot. Most. Maybe, maybe 18 or 20. <laughs> <laughs> In some way or other, you know, like sometimes I'm, well, sometimes I'm listening to an audio book, which is actually on my computer. But um, yeah, my my devices and I are tightly, tightly connected. <laughs> okay. So now that I've got this, I might get a little more playful about the... Um, about the little buoys or the pearls, you know, depending on how I want to look at it. Because these are now separated from that um, naturalistic space that the photograph represents. So I can free myself of concerns around that. And it's kind of nice when, when these orange balls overlap the underlying imagery in, in ways that I find pleasing. Or Judith asks, is there a certain age of printed materials or other um, attribute published material that makes them free um, without worrying about copyright? Ah, so, you know, something like this, the idea is you're, you're divorcing it enough visually, creatively from its origins that it's clear it's become something new. So this is where all of the um, practices like collage and intervention type art um, draw from, which is that if, if your interventions are so minimal that someone, you know, reasonably, reasonably bright and maybe reasonably informed looks at it and can't see that you've actually made something, a statement, something new, out of it, then then you're violating copyright. Now, if you're gathering images, um, anything that's a hundred years or older is in public domain, and it's not just images; it's music, it's literature, all of those things. So, um, now, uh, you know, someone may have written a piece of music two hundred years ago, but if the performance is newer than that, newer than a hundred years, then it's under copyright for the performance, but you'd be entitled to play it, uh, play your own rendition of that music. I think there are exceptions too, like that whole thing about happy birthday being copyrighted, because it's gotta be less than, or more than a hundred years old, but. Um... Yes, well, there are people, you know, uh, like the, uh, we discovered in 2008 that there were people on Wall Street, etc who were um, playing very nasty games with people's 
lives uh, in the form of mortgages. Um, there are people who play very nasty games with copyright and patents as well. And uh, one thing that comes to mind is the guy who bought, he bought um, up that diabetes drug, I think it was, like some very uh, lot, lots and like millions of people use this drug. And he increased the price by like a thousand percent or more. It was insane. And, you know, so then people are choosing between food and taking drugs they need to stay alive, right? So there are people in every, <laughs> so create creativity is no different. There are people who treat it like it's a, it's a game they can, play so they have to do certain legal things to make that happen but in there's a ton of stuff that's available that is properly public domain and um by and large you are fine if it's 100 years or older like that's a very safe place to play but you know this altered book when I'm done with it, it's clearly going to be a new thing. You know, I'm going to alter the covers too somehow. Um, yeah, so it, it, it can't be mistaken for what it was. Judith says, perfect. Very old print and images are often interesting just as they are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, some of the courses I teach, I, I, I give a, a handout that has resources of places, really good sources for huge, huge collections of vintage images. And that can include drawings, um, photography, maps, and also, you know, the subject matter just botanical and animal life and people and urban scenes and it just goes on and on right aquatic things um, so you have to you have to develop some skills with search terms because you can't you know if you have if you know of 15 sites that have collections of millions of images you can't just scroll through those. <laughs> like, like you can do that and just sort of hope you stumble on something that's interesting. But it, it's it's a good idea to say, okay, what's an area that I might look at? Like tools, right? I will look for tools and see what comes up. And uh, and then you can you still would have a huge number of selection, but it would be limited to a particular thing. And that's really valuable as an artist anyway, to um, make choices, look, look at the world through a pair of lenses, as it were, whether you're looking for shape or color, or you're looking for subject matter or um, themes. It's really... Because at every stage, you don't want to starve yourself of what you need to, to make things that have meaning, where you can develop ideas, make associations. Um, so starting with a, a book is one of those things, or starting with some vintage images that you've, you've chosen is another, another thing you can do. And um, that's like, you know, facing a blank canvas is one thing, but do you have stuff around you that you've brought to give you some clues of, of what you might play with, uh, what you might incorporate? Maybe it's pictures of bark that you're not literally going to depict. You just, you like something about the textures. You like the ridginess, you like the cragginess or whatever. So you have those around you. And then that gives you an idea for what you'll lay down first on your canvas. And 
or piece of paper and so on. Um, I know Val, who's on here, uh, she starts with a pile of garbage and, you know, you can't beat it. There's all kinds of fascinating stuff in a pile of garbage. But then even within that, then she probably, she might glom on to one or two things and build from that. Make associations. There. I said there's a certain golden age of botanical slash zoological, et cetera, illustrations yeah. that are just so great. And Judith says she was thinking the same. I want to look at my great grandparents' books with fresh eyes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and, you know, I keep meaning to, I, I keep thinking I'm going to have time during this isolation period to, to get to a whole bunch of things around the house. And one of the things I'd like to do is find my, my grandmother when she was young and her mother and her aunt used to make scrapbooks. And I remember looking at those numerous times when I was growing up and just the amazing ephemera in there you know, cards and uh, illustrations and photographs they cut out. And I mean, I just remember being amazed and I, I'd like to dig some of that out to bring into my work somehow. Because it would feel, you know, that was a creative outlet for them. And it would feel like a, um, a bit of a collaboration Same thing, actually, my grandmother used to make uh, home videos. Did anyone else here used to have, you know, Super 8 home home movies made of, made of yourselves when you were young? Uh, I had some of it digitized. I have to get more of it digitized. Um, but I'm thinking, again, that once I have enough of it digitized, I might be able to find some threads, like starting with a, a book, find some threads to pick up on and then combine with my own things uh, and make, make some videos that are collaborations. My grandmother was the great, was the photographer of the family. And movie taker, right? And, and movie taker, yeah. yeah. So she, that was her... Ex she extended into movies. Yeah. She was also the driver of the family. So she was quite a, quite an accomplished lady. Val says loves, loves her garbage. And I said, she's the trash queen. And that's a big compliment. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, such a good thing when you find your oeuvre like that. My oeuvre isn't around particular materials necessarily. It's more around comp combining and uh, inventing, I think. I mean, yes, there are a few things that I probably, like image transfers or something I'm probably known for and some photo digital stuff or digital mixed media. Okay. So I think, that's enough for me for now. So I, I feel like I've, I've run out of gas on this spread and I just need to let this percolate before I come up with any additional ideas around this for now. So that's fine. Oh, isn't that interesting? Hmm. And there's this. Just getting some, getting some ideas here. If I can turn this fan off now. I have to get my gel plate out. No, oh, I didn't wash my eight by ten. Okay, I'll use my five by seven. So 
something? Something up? I just want to see if my strategy. Yes. Okay. Working for posting websites, but using the word dot. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yes, we discovered that we can't embed links from Cal from any computer other than my own because I'm the host of the live stream. But of course, I can't be typing into the chat. So, uh, so Cal has to enter the um, the links in that way. So when I started out doing the virtual studio parties, I was doing gel printing for the first couple anyway. And uh, gel plate is very much on my mind these days because I've been teaching it and so on. So I'm looking at this, livestock from the sea. And I'm thinking that some Something that has a net kind of feeling is going to be a good thing here. And that's mm. why I've got my gel plate. Mm. Can I? So the gel plate is flexible. Um, so I'm going, you know, uh, speaking of nets, I, I, you know, I'm doing this without a safety net. <laughs> so... Um, you know, I may wreck my beautiful circle page, but that's a risk I have to take in the, I'm going to weigh down this page end. There we go. Uh, yeah, you have to take those risks in order to um, try things. If it doesn't work, you can just glue it shut. <laughs> exactly. Rapidly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need a palette. I'm already in a muddle here. Oh. Note to self, put the barrier cream on before getting out paint. I think once before I was asked about the barrier cream and this is the one this is. I quite like the consistency of it. It's thicker than than the usual ones. The usual ones are uh, like a more liquidy hand lotion and this is thicker like a like a night cream or a cold cream. Is that made by ponds? It isn't, dear. Windsor and Newton. Kim Breland. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. And she says, what's the barrier cream? Uh, I put it on my hands instead of gloves so that the, the paint I get on my hands will wash off easily. Okay, quick answer, thanks. I think she maybe posed it before you actually. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> There's a delay, so sometimes... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to add a little blue to this uh, blue-green because it's too green for me. Bright aqua green, so yeah, it's too green for me. So I'm going to add a little tinted blue. I have way too much paint here, but that's fine. I'm sure I'll find another use for it. Good, you can see this. I was worried for a minute that you couldn't. Okay. I'm not wearing my apron. I knew I forgot. I was bound to forget something. It's well, on the back it? of your chair. Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. so I can. All right. 
Let's try some of this mesh here. Where's my plate? There it is. Okay, I'll just get a, um, I'm just gonna use a page protector, plastic page protector as a, something to protect my spread from what I'm doing since I don't have lots of room. And get some paint on here. And I should have put some retarder in it, so I will do it belatedly. It's not retarder, it's Open Medium by Golden, and it increases the open time of acrylic paints. Yeah. Uh, because I do want to increase the open time a little bit. So I've never done this directly into a book before. So um, once again, I'm another thing I'm doing without a safety net. That's fine. I sort of want to find an interesting shape, and an interesting set of overlaps. And now I will flip this over we'll see And a sponge. No idea if this is going to work. I mean, something will happen. I, I don't know if it'll be desirable, but we'll see. <laughs> the net effect will be worth it. Right. Right. Part of it worked. Okay. So I'm going to wipe some of this off. Let's hope that open medium is really working. Judah says, oh, I feel tense watching. <laughs> is one thing but the risk of, of not trying is worse so here's hoping the paint is wet enough and that I've managed to well I can actually feels like pretty good contact so let's see what happened okay not exactly what I hoped um, A 
put this over here. So I'll show you what it is because, you know, honesty, right? I'm transparent about this. So it's the color. Yeah. So up here was the negative print, and I was hoping to get a little more going on in here than I actually got. Here, this might be harder to um, show, actually. Let's see if I can show it somehow. I actually can't. It needs better lighting. And this light is forward it's, it's, it's at the screen. It's across is someone, it? yeah. Okay, well, it's very textural. So um, it's not, there's an effect that can happen that, that didn't, it sort of happened, but not properly. Um, and now I'm getting thumbprints all over the book too, but that's fine. <laughs> You're signing it. I am going to, I'm going to layer. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, let's get some weight on this so that it doesn't pop closed. And I'll get the fan going so that the paint can dry. So I, uh, I said yummy teal color, and then I asked Mia what color she would pair with it, and she said brown or magenta. I asked Kim how she was doing, and she says, oh, I'm fine, thanks. Nice to be here, although I have to leave soon. I'm thinking about toying with some minimalism for Monday's collage. Thinking about elegant restraint as a change from my usual unbridled <laughs> enthusiasm. <laughs> well, that's fun. It's always fun to play in, uh, play with opposites. And Duda says, cool texture. Yeah, it does get good textural effects, and in fact... There's residue left on the plate, I should show you. So you can see there's plenty of residue left and it is highly textured. Probably more of the effect I wanted is still on the plate. But, uh, so I'm gonna do a, what's called a pickup print on this. Ah, I need another brayer. Can you help me out, dear? Mm -hmm. The bottom drawer of the in this little cabinet, mm -hmm. the plastic cabinet. Oh, has you want more brayers. Yes. Well, here. That's pretty. Uh... It's like a little Chinese puzzle here. Great. Try this one. Try to keep this other one pristine. I don't know if I'll manage to, but now Mia thinks denim blue or violet might work too. That's true. That's right. So the options, you know, they'll have very different effects depending on which you choose. Okay, Kim, now you've really done it. Here, I can do it over here. Sorry that this is partially cut off from your view. Mia asks, do watercolors work on a gel plate? They do. And in fact, uh, this week I was, I was, uh, did a demo portrait in watercolor crayons using a gel plate. Okay, that cleaned off very nicely. Yeah, so not so netty, but very, some nice textures there. So that'll be useful for something. Who knows? Maybe I'll, yeah, nice. when this is dry, maybe I'll bring, you know, cut parts of this out and bring it back into this. So I'll let that dry. The plate's now mostly clean, so that's great. So now I'll think about, whoops. Where's the, put 
this over here. Do we have any of those red bulldog clips? Yeah, there's one. Oh, right, that's stuck for a reason, though. But over there, there are. Yeah. That could help me hold open this book. How are you guys doing? Are you managing to muck around with stuff, Judith? Thank you, dear. It's always good to have some clips. And these won't hurt the paper because they have rubber on the inside. There. So now that book will stay open, which is what I needed it to do. So I'm going to interfere with that. And I'm going to use that mesh again. Mia says, oh, <clears throat> good to know, read the watercolors. I'm concerned about acrylic paints cleanup in my new sink. Does everyone have a special sink for acrylic paints cleanup? And Judith says, got to run. I'll watch the rest later. Have fun making. Hi, Judith. Thanks for coming. Judith, for, for acrylic paint cleanup. Uh, Mia. Or, sorry, Mia. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Judith was the last name I had been thinking of. So, um, two things are really, really important to remember. You should never be pouring the paint down the drain. Okay? So, what that means is uh, there's a limit to that, but. All of your brushes and tools and so on should be well wiped before you start washing them in the sink with detergent um, and, you know, palettes and so on. Now, these butcher tray palettes that I use allow me to soak hardened paint and then I can just peel it out, slides out actually, the skin of the hardened paint. And then I just give it a quick wash and it's it's done. So. So very little in the way of paint goes down. Your brushes should always be squeezed out with a, a paper towel and then that just disposed in the trash and, um, and so on. You're right to be concerned about, um, for sure, about lining your pipes with, with acrylic paint. And uh, it's certainly an issue in... My acrylics classes that I teach in Halliburton, um, I'm always trying to teach proper cleanup because, you know, people need to know that when they go home, but also the school sinks clog up too. Yes. So at the dollar store, you can buy these screens uh, they come in different sizes for different size drains and they can trap chunks so that you won't have any small or large chunks going down your drain um, and getting stuck in your pee trap and so on because you don't want to have to call a plumber. And, um, and then the final thing I do is the I, I will let the um, paint water settle Unless it's very dilute, that I will wash down the drain. But if I know that there's a fair bit of, of paint residue from throwing the tools in, then I will uh, let it settle. could be overnight. And then pour off what's on top and then soak up what's left. Or you can let it dry if you have a garage or a backyard or a balcony to put it out to dry. Now, what was I doing? Let's get this mesh out again and see if I can make better, better use of it this time. Who knows? 
Valerie says Golden now has something called Crash Kit that is supposed to get rid of the paint from the water. Oh, good. Yeah, there is a chemical that separates the uh, solids from water and um, uh, the water that you pour off was good enough for the California clean water guidelines or whatever. Um, but I've, I just haven't got around to finding that chemical. So, which I could probably order from the pharmacy, but, but I'm delighted to hear that Golden's come out with it because obviously it's a product we need. So thanks for that info, Val. That's great. Okay. Now I do want to wipe. There it is. Wipe away some of this. I'm going to wipe away some of that. Good. And just for good luck, I'm going to give a very light misting. All right, let's try this. I posted a link to, without the dots, <laughs> to the golden golden's website with the crash kit oh great that's wonderful okay just in the hope of getting a little bit more of the result I wanted the first time, I'm going to flip this around to impress the paper into the negatives. And we'll see what happens. Um, I'm using Payne's Gray because it's related to the underlying color and I want to break up the teal color that was textured but too still too dense. So I'm hoping, say a little prayer, <laughs> need a lot of faith in art. <laughs> okay. Now I have a beautiful. Mia says, loves those screens. We'll get some as soon as the store opens. And thank you for the valuable cleaning instructions. And thank you, Valerie, for the crash kit. Too. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Val. And you're very welcome, Mia. Okay, not so much. So. You're seeing, as I always say, you're seeing the real deal here. This is what happens in my studio. There's no, nothing cooking show-ish about it. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't uh, gone through all the identical stuff numerous times before. Obviously, I've done these processes before. Well, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Let's see if some of that will transfer. Lots of paint on that brayer, apparently. <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> Make a print from that.
All right, mushier and mushier. So this is gonna have to dry, so I'll get my fan. Set it up here. And I'll print what's left. Gwen just arrived. Hi, Gwen. Hi, Gwen. He says, late arrival, new new commitments. Happy to be here for a bit. How are you both doing? We're doing well. A little tired, but uh, we're doing quite well other than that. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm feeling a little better now. I was really flagging sort of halfway through this past week, and I yeah. feel kind of like I've rebounded a bit. Yeah, I was exhausted on Thursday. Um, my, my class cheered me up, but I was really, really dragging on Thursday. Okay, so not much. Just getting a pickup print there to clean up. So Cal has asked, for uh, put a, the flash quiz, favorite isolation snack. And Val says, my daughter just made chocolate coconut cookies, mm. which have become her new favorite. Wonderful. How old's your daughter, Val? Mia says, Miss Vicky's is a Canadian brand of potato chips. Yes. Yes, I remember those. I can't eat potato, normal potatoes now. Uh, Val says, 33. 33, wow. Time flies, eh? Danica is about close to that age now, isn't she? Our niece is close to that age. Come to that, I guess. Yeah. There we go. Now my gel plate's clean. Put it back in its little case. Gwen says, Chelsea buns, made cinnamon buns, spinach to balance the moderation level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love cinnamon buns. Cal's family had a uh, tradition, his brother's family had a tradition of homemade cinnamon buns. From Chris, scratch on Christmas From scratch night. Christmas morning, we'd all make them. They were to die for, and of course, we ate far too many of them, and Christmas dinner was coming later that day. Yeah. At a certain point, I had to stop eating all these things because I honestly, my digestion wasn't up to it. I just couldn't handle it. But I still remember them fondly. I I, uh, I I said to Val, Val, you had your daughter at what, 10 years old? And she says, yes, I was a child bride. Yes. <laughs> Of course you were. Yeah, okay, there's a good pen. So um, so what's happened is I've got too much mushiness, too much density. I'm not happy with what happened. That's not to say I couldn't figure out a better way of accomplishing what I was trying to do um, at, at a later date. So I'm going to show you the... The problem. So there's my problem. I've got texture, and that is a good thing. Um, but what I want to do is bring some clarity. So I'm going to open up. I'm going to start by opening up this this area here. Get this thing back. Put that away. Put that away. And. Um, I'm going to riff on the netting that was happening up in here and just carry some lines through. And I'm going to stop them at the circle. I sort of, at this point anyway, I want to maintain the integrity of the circle.
So uh, Mia wrote, what is 33? Love cinnamon buns. And I'll answer her about the daughter's age. And I'm saying, Re 33, recommended daily allowance of Chelsea buns. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother loved Chelsea buns. In fact, we would often find she, she uh, her vision got very poor as she got older. And uh, we'd often find sticky spots around her place <laughs> where her sticky fingers had landed after eating a Chelsea bun. Yeah. This is, a, you know, kind of nice, the net because of its relationship to the chain link fence as well. So there's um, something there. The net's designed to catch something or contain something. The fence is a barrier. They visually have properties in common. I'm, I'm kind of liking how that's developing. And you know, I'm not trying to make literal sense of this net. Um, I'm just trying to create a riff off of the net behaviors. One of the things I love about these soft plastic nets is how you can distort them and get beautiful shapes in the gaps. Major jag on Chelsea buns. Oh yeah? Mia's never had one. Gwen was asking about I, I mentioned the Carnarvon Bakery. She said that. She didn't know about that. What tell me about it? It's like they've been closed for like 30 years now. So Yeah, that's probably why she didn't know. <laughs> but you used to go there yeah. in your cottaging, presumably. Yeah. Mia's gonna try and make them herself at home. Have you got candied fruit, Mia? I'm going to show you a progress thing yeah, in just, just a minute. Say, it's looking great. Okay, so see what happens to muck as soon as you clarify it. You bring something to it that has clarity. Oh, it's right. Gorgeous. You see how it's ending at the circle. So I'm going to riff <laughs> some more. <laughs> Mia says, I know, I because I said, prepare to become addicted, Mia. And she says, I know, I'm forbidden from baking banana bread till further notice. My husband and I eat the whole loaf in one day. Let's it's see. hard not to when it's really good, like fresh, fresh baked. There's just nothing like it, right? Yeah. I did pretty well. Cal made me some brownies the other was that last week? Yeah. And uh, they he made a lot of brownies, but they mm -hmm. lasted a few days. So that's that's an accomplishment. You were remarkably restrained. Yeah. I didn't just sit down and mouth them down, <laughs> which I could have. <laughs> uh, it's hard being grown up sometimes, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh, Mia says, no candied fruit at home, sad face. 
And Gwen says, beware. I managed to maintain my weight by walking. I know people who have gained significantly. Yeah. Who said that? Gwen. Right. Well done, Gwen. I think you see the amount of carbohydrates that are being made these days. Uh, a whole lot of people have discovered sourdough, making their own sourdough, and then baking bread from it. I'm actually going to have to bake some bread because my the one kind of bread I can buy that I can eat uh, because I can't have regular wheat, most regular grains, and I can't have yeast, yeast so it's, it's a problem. But I can have sourdough because um, it's wild yeast. Um, yeah, it just hasn't been available at the places we've normally bought it during normal times. So I don't know what's going on with that. If the supply chain for it has become messed up, I should find out if the Dimpfelmeyer bakery is closed or something or. Mia says, love that Kim Lee. It looks like it was always in that book. Oh, that's lovely. It certainly looks like it belongs now. Right. Which is, that's kind of, kind of the point. And you do need to, you know, I mentioned earlier about interfering enough. Um, so when I, it, the drawback to this was that it was mushy and, you know, too dense for my liking. The plus to this, all this stuff is that it's really interfered with, with what the page used to look like and the, the content of the text. So you can see that there's text there, but it's not, um, it, you have to go hunting for it. it. It's hard to read. Some of it can't be read. And that's, that's a good intervention there. Hey, Irene just arrived. Hello, Irene. She says, hi, Kim and Cal. Glad you could make it. I know it's a beautiful day. I was thinking that uh, we'd probably have lower numbers just because of that. People will be out walking or whatever. Yep, she says, I was out having some adventures. Oh, good. Good ones, I hope. Good enough that you're here anyway, so that's that's a good sign. I've asked her to, to tell us what they are. If she would care to share. Because yeah. <laughs> we all have few enough adventures right now that it's good to hear about any. <laughs> These uh, Sharpie paint pens. It's a water-based. Oh no! She said pens. she fell on the ground while walking back and forth on Eglinton. Oh, no. While my snow tires were being taken off. Oh, that's terrible. Are you okay? Did you get bruised or? Eglinton is not easy to walk on. Yeah, it's being torn up in the. Yeah, you know, she's fine. She says. Okay, so, good. Yeah. It's not a good thing to have a big fall. And you've got your tires now. Big band-aid on each knee. Oh dear. I've suggested that she ice the tender bits proactively. Yeah, so that you won't feel them in spades tonight or tomorrow. She said, I would have had more fun with you guys at home. 
let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm sorry that uh, that happened, but yeah. you need to be able to go out. Yeah. Mia asks, any idea where those large clips are available? Yes, uh, Dollarama. They are Betty Crocker brand. They're in the kitchen section where they hang stuff on the wall. And they are five clips for $3. And I recommend them heartily because... Um, I want to hold one up for that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the regular bulldog clips, they're, they'll last forever, um, made of really tough steel. But they're very hard to open and close. So if you have any issues with your hands, arthritis or whatever, um, these are far superior in terms of being able to close and yet hold firmly. Plus they have the grippy rubber bits on the inside. And um, I find them quite durable as long as they're not abused, right? You know, take just take a little care that they don't end up underfoot or getting crushed somehow. Uh, but I recommend them to my life drawing students, for example, to hold hold their paper to their drawing boards. And I use them all the time for things. Yeah. So do you, um, any of you who have gardens or um, whatever, are your bulbs all coming up? I noticed on our, Cal and I were on a walk yesterday, yesterday and um, the daffodils were up in spades and the tulips were coming up, like the, the actual buds, which was amazing to see. And we saw a gorgeous spread of Scylla. Oh, yeah, like a, a blue-violet blue haze because it was a big drift of Scylla. Irene says, beautiful progress on the book, Kim. Thank you, Irene. Anyway, I, I was saying something about the Sharpie that um, these paint pens, the white is not as opaque as some other paint pens. So uh, sometimes I, as, as I have been in places this afternoon, I'll go over them a second time to get the white a little more opaque. I don't mind some transparency in this case, you know, it, it connects the white to what's underlying. But um, there we go. That's good. Gwen says, there are so many live stream events to watch. She says, Wimbledon tennis is on with all the crowds, to which I replied, what? Recordings, I hope. Yeah. Because they haven't ended their lockdown in Britain, I didn't think. I thought they were announcing their plan for for phasing it out, but not actually executing it. There, I'll show you a progress view. Yeah, I'll get a little closer. That's kind of fun, isn't it? It's nice seeing it on the screen, actually. It gives me a different perspective on it. I, I sort of like the way it's sweeping down towards the circle. All right. Gwen also says, free screenings for 24 hours of some of Andrew Lloyd Webber's musicals. Watch Phantom of the Opera last evening. Oh, that's like the National in London has uh, been offering free filmed versions of their live stage plays from their archives. And they bring out a new one every Thursday on their YouTube channel. Um, but I think you can watch them all week until the next one comes on. Um,
and they're asking anyone who's uh, so inclined if, to donate to the benefit of the artists who are have been thrown out of work because of the closure of the theaters. <clears throat> I feel like something needs to interfere with this corner. Corners can be kind of awkward. Nia says, thank you for the clips tip. She'll get some. Um, wonders if garden centers are open to get start some herbs. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. Gwen says, beautiful progression. Thank you very much for work. Um, Phantom was featured on YouTube by Andrew Lloyd Weber for 24 or 48 hours. Donation requested to any actor fund. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. Tango says, I love it. I'm in the abstract heaven. Yeah, sorry. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Line is so wonderful against painterly effects. You know, it's, I printed it, but I printed it with paint and it has very painterly acti activity going on um, because it just kind of gives it this crispness, gives it, uh, draws it all together. It's because of the, the contrast I noticed that Andrew Lloyd Webber was performing on his piano on YouTube. Like, I don't know if he's doing it every day or every week, but it seems like he's playing one of his, one of his classic songs. So uh, Irene says Staples was closed today. You have to place your order online then pick up your order later. Um, Gwen says, I lost the feed when you mentioned the clips. Are they for holding plants up? <laughs> It's the red clip I have on here, Gwen. And it's got a rubber lining so that it doesn't harm the, what I'm clipping together. And it's also easier to, um, the spring is effective without being excessively strong. Yeah, um, it damage the surface. Yeah, so it's, it doesn't damage your hands and it doesn't damage your surface. Um, and they're available at Dollarama, uh, five of them for $3. And I recommend them uh, to all my, any students, any class where we're clipping paper to boards or clamping like this. It's such a great, easy clamp, right? Yeah. Much easier to use than most spring clamps, never mind bulldog clips. So she says, thanks. Yeah, it's a good tip. It's always good to learn about things like that, isn't it? We're just passing 3.30. Are we? Oh, okay. Right. Irene says, on my... On my walks behind my building in the Don Valley, I've seen lots of that orange fencing stuff. Two oh. different designs, even more. It's awesome stuff. <laughs> it's awesome stuff. Yeah, it's great for gel plate printing, for um, stencil painting, for assemblage, collage, you know. I mean, it's got that, the pattern and the color. I'll just get a few more. <clears throat> I'm always reluctant to end when it's a, we're officially supposed to end, so that's why I always go late. I won't go too late today, but I do want to get just a little bit more done on this before. Yeah, please do. Before okay. we go. Okay. And hopefully you will enjoy that. Irene says she thinks Dollaram is still open. Yes, I know it was at, uh, at one point. I haven't ventured out for anything like that, but. No, you send your emissary. I send Cal. <laughs> he gets armored up and uh, packs his Purell and his mask and all of that and.
Irene says, I'm enjoying watching you paint and draw. Oh, that's nice. Thank you, Irene. Hopefully you can have, have your feet up from your adventures and enjoy a nice cup of tea or something. Speaking of a cup of tea, I haven't had anything to drink since this began. Well, you can have some of your hot chocolate, some of your cola, or My your water. Cola. Thank you, dear. Let's get, get a little refreshed. You know what I didn't check? Oh, man. When we had our fence put in, our trilliums. I, I don't, I, they're probably... They're probably I, toast. I'm hoping that they won't because they were underneath, but we'll see. Yeah, we have a few trilliums in our backyard, or had. They were here when we moved in year, a long time ago. 18 years ago, almost. But we had a fence put in, and so I'm a little worried. I mean, I think they normally come out in May, right? Yeah. yeah. So hopefully they will still come out. But Gwen says, I had an adventure picking up a small door part at Home Hardware curbside pickup yesterday. Yes, uh, Cal picked something up there a couple of weeks ago, I think. So, uh, was it tough to do? Like, were there a lot of people there? I think the curbside pickup is a nice thing because then there's so many delays with delivery now. Irene says she loves trilliums. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, remember rice, rest ice at compression elevation. Says, so I shouldn't go for another walk today counts. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, do whatever you want. You're a grown woman. But uh, <laughs> but you'd probably regret it. Yeah. I exercised in the house before this live stream. My, my personal trainer over there gave me a little workout to do. And in response to an adventure, Gwen, Gwen says, not a lot. Went late Friday afternoon. I waited outside the wrong doors and then oh, no. the sign was for around the corner. <laughs> Okay, there's a little section here I'm going to complete. And then I'll do another progress shot, but you can sort of get a general sense of it. See how it's, oh, so just looking at it from a distance, it's really opened up now. So I'm really getting, you know, when I look at it in the screen, I'm really getting a sense, a feeling of what I was looking for initially. So. Sometimes you just have to do things the slow, slow, direct way, right? Mia says, my husband loves the curbside pickup at Canadian Tire. He just came from there. 
this infecting begins. Yeah. <laughs> we have a piece of masking tape, painter's tape, dividing up sections of one stretch of counter. So the the stuff that's just arrived goes on one side of the line and the stuff that's been cleaned goes on the other side of the line. It's quite the uh, procedure. Gwen says, we've been to three different PetSmart locations to pick up kitty supplies. The most difficult ones were north of St. Clair. I couldn't see the sign as it had blown over. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to show my final little progress. They have made it kind of denser in here. So it's more open up here. It's denser in that strip that I've done. And then maybe I'll open it up some more below it so that it's a little more like it is up here. Um, it's good to have changes in density, you know, it makes things more interesting. Yeah, it's looking great. So, uh, so yeah, so there's the spread of the bowl now, and now I'm feeling quite happy with it. So that's a really good demonstration of something that, that I happens again and again in the studio, which is that you're doing stuff and, um, and there's a period where what you're doing seems to make things worse. And I just call that the kind of awkward, awkward adolescent phase of things. The fact is you've got to, you've got to disrupt what's there. So it may make it worse at first, but then you find your way out of that. And that's where the real creativity is. It's figuring out your way out of the, your way out of the hole you just dug for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Irene says, amazing. Gwen says, beautiful. Kim, thanks for sharing. Val says, looks great. Well, thanks so much for being here. I really, I really appreciate it. I love hanging out with you guys. And, um, you know, initially when I start, started to offer this, I thought I'd be doing it for the benefit of my community, right? But I'm doing it for my own benefit too. Yeah. It's really, really nice chatting with you and and sitting down and trying things and ex narrating my my studio efforts. Um, I, I just want to point out something that I really like, which is the dark sort of trail off the bottom of the to the bottom left. Uh, of the yeah. I think that's a really important. So that's what Cal's somehow. really liking. And I think it, it has a nice relationship with all these things coming in. Kind of like the that's like a good point. A shadow of the ball of a ball, or yeah. like it's moving moved onto the page and it's rolled on the ground, or is, it grounds the, yeah, yeah. the circle. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> even if there's a spatial sense, so yeah, that's I hadn't really considered that very much because I was so preoccupied with what was over here. But I think you're absolutely right, Cal. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm liking the movement now. Uh, Astrida says she's been working. Oh, <laughs> hi, Astrida. great to observe the process. Oh, thanks so much. So glad you've been here and enjoying it. That's great. No worries if you don't feel like chatting. And um, anyway. Mia says it looks absolutely fantastic. Can we love it? Oh, thanks, Mia. So I'll just mention again, for any, in case any anyone here arrived later, just that I'm offering a, uh, a six-week course starting Friday, May 15th uh, on altered books in mixed media. And really, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that opens it up to just about everything. So um, including some dimensional aspects. So you can check my website for information on that, as well as the six-week Jelly Jam course I'm offering that starts a week earlier, which is on Thursday, May the 7th. And um, and that's proving popular. So if you want to register for that, you have to do that pretty soon, actually. Astrida says May which? Uh, Jelly Jam is May 7th, which is a Thursday. Uh, so it's the week after next. And the altered books is May 15th, which is a Friday. And it's two next so i'm giving myself an extra week to just get prepped for it so 
So I hope you saw, I hope uh, I get enough. I'd love to get enough to run the altered books. I don't need a, I don't need a big group, but I need enough to run uh, right. because I think it's such a great way to work. I mean, re honestly, it, it kind of, you can pursue any interests you have and do it in the form of an altered book. That's Rita says, got it, thanks. Great. And Mia says, the dark shadow completes it. And I also posted a link to your... Yeah, I tried to, but it's got a nine in it. <laughs> oh, okay. A link to my page, you mean? Yeah, yeah. With the courses? Yeah, or the altered books one. Yeah, so uh, we'll just we'll put it in the description below the video. Uh, so uh, as as soon as this our live stream ends, um, I don't think it takes very long for it to process, and then we'll put it in the the description. So Marie Payne says thank you so much. Aww. Many little tips for sources of various tools. Dollar Store seems to be the place to go. Dollar Store is very handy and so affordable. <laughs> I mean, not everything in it is good, but I, you know, there are a bunch of things and this and the screen drain covers are fantastic. He also says, love what you've done today. Oh, thank you. So glad you could join us. So, so I hope you have an excellent week. The weather's looking fine. And uh, if your flowers start are blooming, then there's a lot to enjoy and uh, be good to yourselves. And uh, we'll see you. Okay. Uh, Cal will stay on the chat for just a few more minutes because there's a delay. And just in case you have anything else you want to ask. And um, I don't know where the tape is for me to. Okay. Thank you. So bye for now. Bye.